So we've gone through and fit a model to estimate the probability of a baby being a low birth weight using if the mother smoked during pregnancy, the mother's age, the mother's race, and the mother's weight at conception. We also, in a separate video, asked and answered a bunch of questions, doing calculations by hand and talking about the concepts. Now we're gonna go through and answer those same questions, but by doing the calculations using R. So this video will, will complement that previous video. And the expression of the model we have here is gonna eventually go off the screen, so it's gonna be handy if you write that down or keep an eye on it. I will pull it up as necessary, but it's gonna be helpful if you have that model expression handy when we're doing some of these calculations. So the first thing we wanna do is try and estimate or predict what's the probability of a baby being a low birth weight if the mother smoked during pregnancy, was 35 years old at conception, was white, and weighed 135 pounds at conception. We can calculate that in R by subbing into the model. And if you remember, we can work out P, the probability of the outcome, as E, to the expression of the model divided by one plus e to the expression of the model. So here on the top, we're gonna to have the exponent of 0 0.332 plus 1.05 times one, right, this mother smoked during pregnancy, plus 0 0.022 times 35, that's their age, plus 1.23 times zero, remember they're white, we're in race category zero, plus 0 0.943 times zero, right, again, they're not in race category two. So those two terms don't need to be in the model, but I put them in there for completeness sake because I'm the one explaining this idea. Minus 0 0.0125 times 135, their weight at conception. All that divided by one plus the same expression, one plus e to the 0.322 plus 1.05 times one and so on. So if we submit that to R, we'll see there's a 25.4% chance of a baby being born low birth weight given these values for the X variables. We can also get R to calculate these using the predict command. And I do wanna mention here, the predict command is pretty finicky in R. To use the predict command, you need to feed it new data that you wanna predict for, but that new data needs to be in the exact same data format as the data set that the model was fit to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is work on creating this new dot data, and I'm gonna feed it the variables one for the mother smoke during pregnancy, the mother's age of 35, the race category of zero, right, or white, and the weight at conception of 135. So I'm gonna feed this as a matrix with one row. Okay, so this data is gonna be contained in one row. And I'm gonna tell R as a data frame, as the model was fit using a data frame. So I'm gonna do that. Let's take a look at that new data. Okay, so the first thing is, these variables need to be in the exact order that they were when we fit the model. You can see the variable names right now are V1, V2, V3, and V4. So what I'm gonna do is using the call names command, I'm gonna give column names to the new data. So I'm gonna assign smoke, age, race, and LWT to the column names. Let's do that here. Now, R also needs the variable types to be the same as they were in the data set that the model is fit to. So we need to change the smoking and the race to be factors in this new data that we've created. And we need the age and the LWT to be integers, because that was the variable type for the age and LWT in the data. So here, I'm gonna tell R, find new.data column two and make that as dot integer. Find in new data column four and make that an integer. Column one, make that a factor. Column three, make that a factor. Now, if we look at the new data we've created, we can see that here. We can see it's one row that has smoke, age, race, and LWT. Again, the variable names need to be the exact same, the same variable types. So it's quite finicky to do that. Now let's go ahead and make the prediction. We can use the predict.gln command. So here, we're gonna ask our, to make a prediction for a GLM, right, we fit a generalized linear model. The model that we wanna predict for is this sake of discussion. The new data that we wanna predict for was this new dot data that we've just created. And the type equals response is asking R to give us the predicted probability of low birth weight, not the predicted log odds of low birth weight. Now, if you recall, we can think of logistic regression as being expressed in the probability of the outcome or the log odds of the outcome. So telling it type equals response is telling R we want to be returned the probability that's predicted. So let's do that here. And we see the predicted probability is 25.1%, what we calculated before by hand. The slight difference is due to the rounding error where we rounded the coefficients when we did the calculation by hand. So that's just how we can get R to make the prediction but I really do want to point out the predict uh, and predict.glm commands are quite finicky and often um, you encounter errors if the data is not exactly as it was for the model fit. Now the next question that we wanted to work through was seeing can we change 
um, race two or other to be the reference category. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a whole new variable that has race two as the reference category. We could go ahead and change race to have race two as the reference category, but I want to keep the race variable the same as the original ordering in the data set so that as we work through this data set, we're not encountering different output depending on what the um, reference category is for this variable. So to change the reference category, we can use the relevel command. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable race.new, and I'm going to go through and relevel. So I'm going to take the race variable, and I'm going to make the reference category be category 2. So let's take a look at that. Now we can look at a table of the race variable, and we can see the categories are ordered 0, 1, 2, 0 being the reference, the one that comes first numerically. If we check a table for this race.new variable, we can see they're ordered 2, 0, 1, right? So we forced 2 to be the first category or the reference category. We could go ahead and fit a model that uses race.new if we wanted to have race2 being the reference category for the model. And we'll do that later on in a separate question. Now I just want to point out, when using categorical variables or factors in regression models, quite often one of the categories makes most sense to be the reference so usually it would be things like the unexposed would be the reference and the exposed would not be the reference. So we want to see how do the probability of the outcome change for exposed relative to unexposed. So if the reference category that's chosen by default is not what you want to be referenced, here's one way you can change it. Now let's look at calculating odds ratios and confidence intervals for the odds ratios for all of the variables. To calculate the odds ratios, we can just exponentiate the coefficients from our model. So let's look at doing that. And here we'd have the odds ratio for smoking. So the odds of low birth weight for a smoker are 2.87 times higher than a non-smoker, adjusting for age, race, and LWT. The other odds ratios would have similar interpretations. We can calculate confidence intervals for the odds ratios by exponentiating the confidence interval around each of those coefficients. So let's look at that here. This gives us the 95% confidence interval for each of the odds ratios. And for a neater presentation on our screen, we can bind them all together in a columnized fashion, and I'm going to round to three decimal places. So let's take a look at doing that here. And we can see, for example, here's the odds ratio for smoking, 2.87, and the 95% confidence interval. We're 95% confident the odds ratio for smoking is between 1.38 and 6.19. Now a separate question, what if we wanted the odds ratio for age to be for a five-year increase? Right? Maybe looking at how do the odds of low birth weight change with each additional year is not a big enough change for it to be meaningful to look at. So if we want to calculate the odds ratio for a five year change in age, what we can do is just multiply the coefficient of age by five and then exponentiate. So first, just a reminder of the coefficients from the model. We can see the age coefficient is negative 0.0224. So if we want to calculate the odds ratio for a five unit change in age, what we can do is take the age coefficient and multiply it by 5 and then exponentiate that. And I just want to put a reminder, we haven't said that this model is good or correct, so we might not want to be interpreting these odds ratios. They might have a lot of bias in them. But right now we're just talking about fitting the model and interpreting some of the coefficients as they are. Later we'll get to model building. Now, if we want to put a confidence interval around that 5-year increase odds ratio, what we can do is multiply the lower and upper limit of the confidence interval for the coefficient of age and then exponentiate those. So here I'm going to get the confidence interval for the coefficients, then I'm going to multiply them by 5, and then I'm going to exponentiate that. And we can see that the confidence interval for the odds ratio for age for a 5 unit increase in age is 0.63 up to 1.24. And just to make it a little bit neater, because we don't want to actually multiply all the coefficients by 5, right? it doesn't make sense to multiply the smoking coefficient by 5, say. What we can do is make a confidence interval for the coefficients, and then here I'm asking R to give me only the third. Okay, so extract only the third one, multiply that by 5, and then exponentiate it. And we can see here we're now getting the confidence interval for the odds ratio of age of a 5 unit increase in age. And just that one. Now another question, we might want to use this model output but calculate the odds ratio of low birth weight for black versus other, right, or race category 1 versus race category 2. And if you remember, the way the models fit, race category 0 or white were the reference. So all of the odds ratios we got were black versus white or other versus white. So what if we wanted to have, say, black versus other? How can we do that? 
First, we'll look at how we can do that with the model that we've already fit. And then we'll look at how we can reparameterize the model to have race category other as being the reference. So just a reminder of the model coefficients. Now what I want to remind you here is this coefficient here of 1.23 is the change in the log odds of low birth weight for race one relative to race zero. This here is the change in the log odds of low birth weight for race two relative to race zero. If we take the difference in these, it's gonna give us race one versus race two. And in a separate video, we explain this a little bit more in a little bit more detail. So let's take the difference in those two coefficients, which is gonna give us the change in the log odds of black versus other, and then let's exponentiate that to get the odds ratio. So now this odds ratio would tell us someone who's categorized as black has 1.33 times the odds of a low birth weight baby than someone categorized as other, adjusting for the other variables in the model. We can also take the odds ratio of black versus white and the odds ratio of other versus white and take the ratio of those to get that odds ratio. Or we can exponentiate the coefficients of each of them and take their ratio. Now, I'll leave it to you to think a little bit about why we can do it that way as well. And what you want to think about is the properties of logs and exponents. Now, let's look at how we can calculate the odds ratio of black versus other by reparameterizing the model, right, or changing who the reference is. Recall that we've already created a new race variable. We call that race.new, and it had other as the reference category. So let's just look at the table to remind ourselves. Race two, or other, was the reference category for this variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit a new model. I'm going to call it model.1 reparam, or reparameterized. And in here, you can see we're going to use the race.new variable. So let's fit that model. And let's ask for a summary of that model. Now we can see this coefficient here, race category two has become the reference. And this gives us the change in log odds for race category zero relative to race category two. This here gives us the change in log odds for race category one relative to race category two. So if we exponentiate this, that's gonna give us the odds ratio for race category one versus race category two, or the odds ratio of low birth weight for black versus other. So let's just copy that and let's exponentiate it. And we can see the odds ratio of 1.33, again, which we calculated by hand. Now you can have R do all these calculations as well. You can exponentiate the coefficients from the model. And we can see there, we get the odds ratio of race category one versus race category two. And if you wanted to, like before, you can exponentiate the confidence intervals or bind them all together and round to two decimal places. And here we've got the odds ratio of black versus other and the 95% confidence interval for that odds ratio.